Today on Steve's Makerspace, we're looking at Rube Goldberg machines and chain reactions. And I'll give you some tips on how to make your own Rube Goldberg machines in Scrap Mechanic. Steve's Makerspace. Hi everybody, welcome to Steve's Makerspace. It's another beautiful day in Scrap Mechanic. Uh, first off, you might be wondering, what is a Rube Goldberg machine? Rube Goldberg machine is something that is really complicated a machine that accomplishes a very simple task. Uh, it's unnecessarily complicated. Here's a picture. The man sips his soup. The um, cracker goes flying up into the air. The parrot grabs the cracker. The water spills into the bucket. The bucket goes down and the lighter lights the rocket. The rocket shoots up into the air, cuts the string. The uh, napkin wipes the guy's face. You've got um, an automatic face wiper. Yay! So this uh, cartoon, these cartoons were illustrated by Rube Goldberg in the 1910s. There's also a fellow named Heath Robinson in the UK who did similar uh, cartoons in the 1910s. That's a hundred years ago. So that's where Rube Goldberg uh, machines come from. Uh, people are doing these Rube Goldberg machines. You can find videos on YouTube and they're a lot of fun to watch and they're fun to build. Uh, they're challenging to build, but they're fun. I'm gonna start off by showing you the two Rube Goldberg machines that I built, plus the mousetrap chain reaction. And uh, then after that, we'll get into some tips and tricks for building your own Rube Goldberg machine. But first, we're gonna say hello to my good buddies, Norby and Vinny. How you doing, guys? Steve, this looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's fun to watch and it's fun to build. Um, it's a lot of work to build, but I think it's worth it. Seems awfully inefficient to me. Well, sure it's inefficient, but that's not the point of a Rube Goldberg machine. The point is to uh, be silly and have fun. And it's also a real engineering challenge. I mean, there's a lot of physics going on, lots of moving parts, and to get it all going and, and make it all happen in one go is a real challenge. Well, I do like a physics challenge. All right, well, let's take a look. First up is the no power Rube Goldberg machine. This is only powered by gravity and by momentum and transfer of energy from one object to the next. Check it out. Wait a minute. You did all of this to knock over a toilet paper roll? Is this what you're telling me? Well, how else are you gonna knock over a toilet paper roll? Right. All right, next up is the powered Rube Goldberg machine. This uses uh, anything in the inventory that you want.
Well, that was a better finale. Thanks, Norby. And the final project for today is not a Rube Goldberg machine, but it is a chain reaction. There are some videos on YouTube where uh, people set up like a thousand mouse traps, and then they would throw a ping pong ball into the middle of the mouse traps, and all the mouse traps would go off. They'd set each other off, and they'd film it in slow motion, and it just looked really cool. So I wanted to do something similar to that in Scrap Mechanic, um, and so this is my attempt at that. Yeah, it's working pretty well. The sound of this is kind of freaking me out. I agree, this is kind of the weirdest sound I have ever heard in Scrap Mechanic. Alright, here it is at regular speed. like a whole mess of hornets. And there you have it. So uh, we're not done yet, but I want to tell you, if you like what you've seen so far, give me a subscribe and tell your friends. This is so cool. I can't believe this guy did this in Scrap Mechanic. Help me out. All right, now we're going to get into the tips and tricks. Here we go. So my first piece of advice is to start at the beginning, build it in sections, and test each section multiple times before you move on to the next section. Because you really don't want to build a really long section and then find out that a part in the middle doesn't operate properly and then you have to uh, work really hard to figure out how to fix that. Now when you're doing your testing and you're in the middle of your machine or the end towards the end of your machine, it doesn't mean you have to set up the entire machine all over again just to test the middle or the end part. Uh, you can set up uh, temporarily a domino on a bear. If you ever have two objects hitting each other very quickly, uh, make sure that um, one or both objects are of a thickness of two because uh, objects that are a thickness of one will go through each other. They'll glitch and then uh, they'll be stuck together. You don't want that. If you want your dominoes to turn a corner like they do here, you're going to want a domino turner machine. I've got one in Scrap Mechanic uh, Workshop that you can download, domino turner. Another tool I'd recommend uh, is a lift. This is a variable lift that goes quite high. Um, about 70 blocks high and um, goes to a varying number of um, heights and you press one button to go up one button to go down I've cut a hole underneath the seat so if the lift is say 20 blocks high you can still get into the seat by uh, pointing underneath the seat Ta -da! you can see each bar has two bearings one going to the right one going to the left and each um, bearing is set to turn at a 15 degree angle um, and then negative 15 and then positive 15 except for the first bearing and the last bearing which are half of all the other bearings um, so 7 and 8 add to 15 so that, that's how that works. The domino turner and the variable lift are both available in uh, the Steam Workshop. Another way to get high quickly is to put a series of seats facing either sideways or um, facing down and then going uh, from one to the next to the next. In the case of the ball I had made, uh, that wasn't really an option. For round objects, uh, tires and tanks, make sure that you secure them to blocks until the last minute. Um, so right before you're ready to, for your Rube Goldberg machine to go off, then you have to go around and uh, take the blocks off of the round objects. Because if you leave um, the round objects sitting uh, and you think that they're just going to stay there, uh, eventually they're going to roll off when you're not expecting them to. 
so uh, secure them. For the giant hammer, uh, the bottom would slide out if I didn't have it secured with a bearing, so um, I would suggest that for anything that's top heavy, and then you can uh, temporarily hook it up, hook the bearing up to a controller to get the hammer back upright, um, and then disconnect the bearing when you're ready for uh, the hammer to fall freely. This rocket lift has toilet paper tubes to help it climb the lift. They're just spinning freely. I created this ball that had to start way up high. I didn't want to keep rebuilding the ball, so I had to figure out a way to get it up. Uh, you can't put just put it on the regular lift because it's too high. So I'm attaching the ball to my the lift that I built using the welding tool. Then I detach it from my lift and then I reattach it with the welding tool um, to where it needs to go and then I detach it when I'm ready to test it. The swinging glass uh, ramp has a sensor on it to de detect when the ball gets onto the ramp and then it swings out. This guy has a sensor in his belt to, so that when he falls over he'll start spinning his arms to try to keep himself from falling over. Here I was doing some testing and the big guy uh, gets set off and flails, flails around a lot, which is kind of funny. It looks like he's going for a swim, or maybe he's doing gymnastics. He's exerting himself without accomplishing anything, not unlike many people in our society. Well, maybe he's having fun. Now, here's a little bit about the mouse traps. Uh, this is just showing you the iterations I went through uh, to develop the final mouse trap project. This is uh, what I came up with first, and that didn't work very well. And so then I added um, an extra turn so that there are two bearings instead of just one bearing, and that worked. A little bit better. Uh, then I tried uh, putting the mouse traps rather than all facing the same direction, uh, make them face different directions. Um, and then that still wasn't, uh, I wasn't quite satisfied. So then I finally put walls around the whole thing so that uh, they would bang against the walls and bounce back. And that worked really well. So that's how I came up with the final project uh, product for the mousetrap uh, chain reaction. And here it is again. Here's what happens if you try standing on top of one of these things. Whee! You ever see one of those western barroom fights where somebody gets thrown out of the bar? That's all we got time for today. If you liked it, give me a subscribe right about here. Click. It's that easy, and it helps. And I'd like to see your comments, suggestions. If you want to show off your own Rube Goldberg machine, if you want to shout out to somebody, let me know. I'm interested. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. See you next time. Bye. Steve's Makerspace. That's all we got time for today, boys. Yes, Rube Goldberg. This bump. Oh, yes. There comes a time in every man's life when he has to build a Rube Goldberg machine. Rube Goldberg, Rube Goldberg, ah, ah, ah. Rube Goldberg, Rube Goldberg, ah, da, da. you're my man. Woo. It, come on, you can do it. I know you can. It's easy and it helps. Me. <laughs> what are you looking at?